hi I wanted to come on tonight to share a couple of journal entries and so the first one I titled a father's presence and the quote says beautiful is the man who leaves a legacy that that of shared love and life it is he who transfers meaning assigns significance and conveys in his loving touch the fine art and gentle shaping of a life this man shall be called father and that's by Stella Payton. Thank you so much for that. So uh, I started to actually write about this um, some months ago, but I just thought I would share some of my thoughts and what inspired me to come on to wanna share also about this topic is because I ordered the book the father daughter talk by RC Blakes and so I haven't finished it yet but it's really interesting to get like a father's perspective um, he's a father of daughters he's also a pastor and it's just interesting to get the perspective of like a man and to understand some of the processing and like cerebral concepts that a man has and how he thinks and what he values and to get a perspective about that. So this book offers that. So I would recommend it um, for sure. So I just thought I would come on and share what I've learned and just some of my thoughts that I've jotted down. So, um, I, I, I read a study on census.gov and the study said that along with a decline in marriage rates and a rise in births outside of marriage, the U.S. has the world's highest rate of children living in single parent households. Almost one fourth of the children under 18 live with one parent and no other adults. And that number declines to 3% in China. 4% in Nigeria and 5% in India and 80% of those households with single parents are single moms and I just thought that was like really I mean I knew the number of households with single parents was pretty high especially single moms but I didn't realize how high it was and yeah it, it just really struck with me because and it really sh showed me especially looking at like the current culture and the way that things are going it's a lot of it is due to a lack of a father's presence in a household and you know I just thought I would come on and share some of my thoughts here so I like many people not just women but many people have grown up in a single female household and one of the things that you know I I didn't realize how important having a father in that household was until I, I'm, I've gotten older and have started to go through my healing journey and you know read scripture and and get under kingdom teaching and all of that so I didn't realize until much later now that you know what the impact would be of not having a father in the house I, did, I didn't understand it um, for all of these years and so yeah I just think it's, it's really crucial because especially like for any single parent household, whether it's a, a man, a dad raising his, his kids um, without the mom present or the m mother doing it without the father. It, there's a reason why it was designed to have a mom and dad in the house. And because each, no one role can really fulfill the other. There's, there's supposed to be that dynamic there in the household and it's supposed to be like a partnership and so 
Yeah. And it, it's also important too, because I, what I've noticed and taken from my own like upbringing and things like that is because being raised in a single female household, it's, I only get the female perspective and how my mom handled things for whatever situation, uh, you know, that would arise or just anything. I only got her perspective and how she handled the household. So I never was able to see what a healthy dynamic looked like in terms of how a father should lead in the house and how, you know, the, the mother supports him and, and works with him and how they actually just work together as a team. I was never able to see that. And so I didn't really understand submission either in, in terms of being able to allow a father's voice and direction to really shape me either. So it's, it's really, really important. Um, I would say, and just also just speaking as a single mom, one thing that I would say too, is because right now, I think it's really difficult to be able to have a balance in terms of balancing out one's masculine and feminine energies as a single mom because in the household if you had both parents you know and we think about the the dad in terms of him leading the household in 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 under Christ and the mother under him and you know he covers her and then you know, there's this whole dynamic of how the household is led under him. And it's like, as a single mom, you're making all the decisions from the time your feet hit the floor in the morning to the time you get back in the bed. Every single decision is on you. Finances, school activities, uh, where to go to school, like all, every single decision is is up to you and it's just a lot of women I think single moms find it difficult to really balance out their feminine and, and to actually just be able to come into a more feminine space I think as single parents as single moms because we feel like we just can't even like relax and take it easy. And it's like, we're always preparing for the next thing. And, you know, so that's one thing I've also noticed, but yeah. So as I was reading the book, I thought I would just share some of the things that I've, that he pointed out in the book and that I ta had taken from it. So yeah. Um, so one of the things that he said in the book, which I thought was really interesting, was because he said that practically every intimate relationship, yes, practically every intimate relationship women develop with men are either an attempt to distance herself from a negative father, perpetuate the security of a good father, or she is fishing for the father she never had. And that's, that's one thing he pointed out in here. And, and and then he goes on to say, apart from sex, everything a woman finds in a good father should be experienced with a good husband. And so I'll just stop there for a second because now that I am in scripture and reading and getting kingdom teacher and understanding that Yes, while I might not have an earthly father, God is my heavenly father. So that does mean being able to communicate in prayer and talk to him, but then also being receptive to his voice and instruction and allowing him and allowing me to have faith 
in him. And that's something that I had not been used to or adjusted to in any capacity because there was no father figure in the household as well as no strong masculine figure present in my childhood growing up. So, yeah, and, and one of the things I had written down here um, that I had taken from the book as well was because he said, so the heavenly, your, like your heavenly father and your earthly father all have the same role aside from sex that should be experienced in a marital bed, right? And then as both roles entail being a provider, a supporter, a protector, and uh, a spiritual guidance, we miss the experience in the household so then we don't have a frame of reference when we get in the world and start dating and picking spouses. And it, yeah, I just found that to be so true. So true. And another thing he pointed out here, he says, when the woman has not had the proper fathering, she takes her social signals from the foremost male perspective to which she is exposed. Now I'm going to be transparent here. I'm going to be transparent. I can remember growing up, and my childhood was like a little bit of a, it was like mixed. And when I say that, it's because my dad's side was like more calm. And like my, so my dad's mother and her husband, my grandfather, they were like middle class. They lived like a really peaceful sort of life. And so every weekend I would go and spend time with with them every weekend my sister and I would go there which was like a relief a relief and much needed right and I, I didn't appreciate that time and until I had gotten older but then my mom's side was much more rough in terms of what I was exper was of what I was exposed to and and here's what I mean when I say that so like my grandmother, my great grandmother, I should say, like I remember spending a lot of time at my great grandmother's house and she had the kind of house. It was sort of like, I don't want to say like a trap house. And when I say trap house for anybody who's not understanding what I mean, sort of like rough, very rough, meaning like my uncles that were into drug dealing, they would be there a lot and often live there sometimes at some point because my grand my great grandmother, she had the kind of house where like she would just let people come in and live there if they needed. And yeah, like my uncles who were grown, like she let them live there and they would bring their girlfriends and, um, you know, they would have, it was just like neighborhood drug dealers would come and pop in. Like the drug addicts would come over and sell packs of meat and stuff to my grandmother. It was like that. It was like that. I remember a couple of cages where like SWAT came in the house. And I mean, I can remember things like that happening. So just roughness. I can remember just seeing the dynamic between like how my uncles treated their girlfriends and especially like how they would op often argue too. And I would also see like the family physical fights and from like drunken spades games and like the nights they would like have card games and get so drunk and be fighting. So it was like, I was I, I was exposed to some of this stuff here. And so those male figures, and it was multiple, I mean, four, four and five at one time, even more than that at any given time. But this sort of masculinity is what I was exposed to on this side of my, on my mom's side of the family growing up. And so some of my concepts I had gotten was like about... A man should be, you know, 
spending money. That's how he showed his affection for a woman. He should spend money on her and and give her gifts and, and this or that. Or it was all also like an extreme too because I developed like a sort of sort of trust issues because I was like I in anxiety too because it's like after seeing fighting and things like that, I'm like I never would wanna be married or be you know with someone like you know so but i'm saying all of this to say that the point he just made is as far as saying that the woman she takes her social signals from the foremost male perspective in her life that she's been exposed to and that's so true because it shapes us and i mean just pause too because like and i had written something down about it and i said from children, we don't really understand that every experience or person who enters our life is either subtracting or adding to our soul. This math continues on into adulthood and often we are left with the negative, we are left in the negative from the constant withdrawals and no positive masculine perspective that adds to us. And it's so true. When we're like younger, we don't really understand and realize that every experience we have and every encounter we have is is affecting us in some capacity big or small um but in some capacity it's either adding to us or subtracting from us in some way and we don't really realize the sum total of that until we're adults and then we have to heal and process all this stuff right and i just thought that was really interesting it you know um what i was reading and connecting it back to my childhood and just even things I've experienced as an adult and the things I've seen and, and witnessed in my family and just what you can see in culture nowadays as most households are growing up without fathers. So I just thought that was really interesting. And so, yeah. Um, and one of the things I thought that's really helped me and what I would also like encourage, especially for, it's not even just like young women though. I would say just in general is to get under kingdom teaching because again, I had not been someone that had grown up in a church like in any sort of I did go to church at some points when I was like forced but I never enjoyed it and so it, it didn't stick and I, I just I didn't have like that strong spiritual foundation growing up I didn't have that and as I went into adulthood I didn't pray and things like that so what I'm saying is is that it's great value and really having a relationship with your heavenly father. If there's no earthly father present and no strong masculine figure present, um, who is also submitted to God as well though. So I just found it great comfort to be willing and receptive to be under kingdom teaching um it's really valuable and has really helped me so i would really encourage that uh, especially you know if you grown up without um male leadership uh, i would say that and so another thing that he has said in the book he said when father when natural fathers are absent god designates spiritual leader spiritual fathers to subsidize the deficiencies in the daughters i'll say it again he says when natural fathers are absent god designates spiritual fathers to subsidize the deficiencies in the daughters so again it's kind of what i was just saying for me i remember when i started to go on my whole healing journey here one of the first pastors and speakers I was introduced to was Miles Monroe and I 
if you actually was to look at Miles Monroe and like look at his books that he's written, I have like a few more than a few back there, but um his the books he's written, the amount of um content and videos you can like see of him speaking, you know, he's years and years and years the content has been available, but it's like I did not even know who Miles Monroe, I didn't even know who that was until last year. So again, that's what I'm saying. It's like when I started to become intentional about my healing and be willing to get more knowledge and open up the Bible and sort of get in alignment, the resources for me to get more information and to help heal came into my path. And, but the thing is, I was like really receptive to it and it, it really, really tremendously actually helped me. So Miles Monroe, like spiritual fathers, uh, he would be like, he actually was the first person that I remember being gravitated towards at the beginning of my journey here. And then um tony evans i had never even heard of him either again i had been so far removed from like church or anything revolving around church or the bible or anything like that but tony evans is another person um jerry flowers and he's more younger but you know he his content and um his the way he conveys his his messages are really really impactful as well so i would recommend him as well um td jakes of course and then if you're a woman um or a man but especially women i'm gonna say sarah jakes roberts like I, just because and I don't even think she even understands and realizes how many people she is helping i don't even know if she really understands that but yeah so spiritual leaders can can take the place and and stand in the gap for the the things that were missing when you were a child and throughout your life and they can sort of help you fill in the gaps to to bring you into a more of a wholeness space so yeah i just thought that was really interesting so um, I've, I've written a lot more down, but I don't want to make the video too long, but just some things I had taken, you know, just taken. Um, and so the book again is called the father daughter talk by RC Blakes. Um, so I do recommend it. Um, yeah. And I think I'll make another video talking about my celibacy journey here. Um, yeah, because he, he also talked about that in the book. So I'm like, why not, why not talk about that? So, yeah, I'll make another video talking about celibacy so far. Um, yeah, but thank you so much for listening. And I will talk to you on the next video.